I am a firm believer of when you smell smoke, you look for fire. And there is tons of smoke around Matthew Kachuk right now. And it started last night for me with a tweet from the Calgary Flames. Here to help me sort through it all is a man that knows the market pretty damn well. Eric Francis, senior columnist, analyst with Sportsnet, joins me now. Welcome back to the show, Franny. How are you, man? Ah, it's good to be on, my friend. And, and you know what? You forced me to put on a shirt, which is good for society. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so the tweet yesterday, and I, I felt like I didn't do our, our viewers justice when I read it because I was kind of searching for what it actually meant. And I knew that, you know, the offer sheet kind of sort of added a wrinkle to the equation, but I didn't quite get it. But for those who didn't see it, Flames filed for club elected salary arbitration with Matthew Kachuk and followed it up with this provides us the opportunity to continue to work with his representatives towards a contractual resolution while removing the possibility of an offer sheet. And then I went to sportsnet.ca a little later on in the night and I read your column, which was really interesting. So explain to me the way you see what the Calgary Flames were telling the world. Well, the way I see this, there's no other way to interpret this move other than this is the, the beginning of the end for Matthew Kachuk as a Calgary Flame. And that... That might sound shocking, and the finality is quite jarring, especially given what this marketplace just went through with Johnny Gaudreau. But I think for years people have seen that this is a very real possibility, and and here we are, two American players who, who just decide they don't, they want to control their fate, and, they, and that means going south of the border. So, so what the Flames did by, by making that filing is they bought themselves some more time. Sure, it prevents an offer sheet, you know, one a team from going in and giving them a one-year offer, you know, uh, they could lowball. Uh, Kachucky may accept it just so that he can play somewhere else next year. And then the Cal what would mean it would mean was the Calgary Flames would have to match that or let him walk for nothing, which they don't want to do. If they match it, he walks for nothing anyway because you can't trade him for a year after you match an offer sheet. So right. here we are. They bought more time with the arbitration. You know, what I thought was probably going to happen all winter, summer long was going to be he would sign his $9 million qualifying offer on by Friday and then walk into free agency at the end of next year. Nobody wants that in Calgary. And you know what? It's not best in the player's best interest for that to happen. He, he and his representatives, I do believe, are working with the organization to try and make this uh, a seamless transition. Send him to a team where, they really, where he would maybe consider signing an eight-year extension, and then the haul for the Calgary Flames would be, mag would be huge. And, uh, and they have to stop this, this stream of star players leaving town for no compensation. That's right. evident with the Johnny Gaudreau situation. So they're proactively decided, here's the course of action. And what I think is, you know, it's pretty clear to me. Matthew Kachuk has made it clear. You know, he did something that Johnny Gaudreau should have done months ago, which is, hey, I'm just not going to sign in Calgary. No offense. I just want to return closer to home. I want to go to the States. I want to go where the grass is greener. Let's work together to make this a seamless transition for everybody. Okay, before we get into what that seamless transition looks like, I can hear what sounds like either kids playing in the pool or some sort of uh, activity <laughs> Sorry, going on behind. No, what, what's the reaction to this? Like, what, what's the reaction in Calgary to just hearing what you're saying? Because I saw a tweet earlier today from St. Louis Radio that you had gone on there, and then the reaction from Calgary just came pouring in. Yeah, I mean, it's my belief that this thing will get done in the next week or so. I really do believe that they're going to move quickly. I, I don't think there's any reason to prolong this. It's it's pretty clear in my estimation that they've decided that they're not going to sign a long-term deal. Anything less than, uh, you know, a one-year deal is not acceptable for the Calgary Flames. So if that's not going to happen, then they have to move forward. So the reaction in Calgary, shock, dismay. People can't believe this is happening again, what, you know, 72 hours after the Johnny Gaudreau situation, whatever the – the timeline is it's just one punch after another for Calgary Flames fans. And again, I tell you, when you sit back and you look from afar, you should have seen this coming a long time ago. And it's not a slight on the Calgary Flames organization. It's a problem for all Canadian teams. Yes, in Edmonton, guys are signing for less to stay there, but that's because they have the two best players in the world there and they have a brand new rink. There's some reasons why players would want to go there for a better opportunity hockey-wise. Uh, most of the rest of Canada and, and – Brace yourself, Toronto. This is going to happen with Austin Matthews. Take this clip and remember I said this because when Austin Matthews gets one year away and the Leafs are clearly not going to be able to re-sign him, this is going to happen to Austin Matthews and the Leaf fan base too. Hmm. Okay, so what, what, 
Let me separate that from the conversation we're having for now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that look like for Calgary? Because you've lost Johnny Goudreau. You were a yeah. division winner. And by most accounts, one of the teams, if not the, the team most equipped to go deep in the playoffs in yeah. Canada. So, so what, is it, what does a deal for Matthew Kachuk look like at this point? And who do you think the favorites are? Well, yeah, this is all happening so quickly. I haven't yeah. had a chance to look at who the favorites are. But I know... Uh, the obvious ones are St. Louis, Boston, where he has ties, family ties, mm -hmm. um, you know, good organizations that, you know, he can envision himself spending the rest of his career at. You're looking at a massive haul for a guy, you know, assuming they can find the right fit and Matthew gives his blessing and everybody says this is the right move and there's a chance of an eight-year extension to be signed soon thereafter and wherever he goes, then I think you're looking, you know, I don't think there's any question. You're looking at it. Uh, a top six player in return you're probably looking at a, a first round draft pick you're also probably looking at a at a bottom you know bottom nine uh, or top nine top 12 player uh, I, I think the hall will be massive three four players uh, would not be out of the question this guy's a unicorn there's nobody yeah. else in the nhl like him i mean look at that highlight right there between the legs how many guys are doing that how many guys like that can turn a game with his mouth with a hit with a goal with a pass He's one of the only players on the planet who can absolutely do everything in hockey. And he proved it this year. Will he be as effective without Johnny Gaudreau? No one expects that. But this guy's a leader. He'll wear the C for a lot of years somewhere in the National Hockey League. Okay, you said family ties and you didn't mention Ottawa. Are you convinced that he just well, wants out of Canada? Well, here's a sexy one I'll throw out of you. What about Debrinket coming here as part of a package that sends Matthew Kachuk there? Because look at Matthew Kachuk and Debrinket, although different players... Both 24 years of age. Both one scored 42 goals. One scored 41 goals. Boy, would uh, that would be a cornerstone sort of return for the Calgary Flames if they were to get a guy like DeBrinket uh, in, in in exchange for a deal like this. So, oh my my puppy's in here now. He's adding to the oh, conversation. Nice, so, nice. yeah, every, everybody's got an opinion on this. It's amazing. Everybody wants to weigh in. But I, you know, yeah, Matthew Kachuk out of it. But there's the same problem. Matthew Kachuk doesn't want to play in Canada. Matthew Kachuk does not want to play in Ottawa. In my belief. But the allure of playing with his brother, that's pretty sexy and hard to dis – you know, I'm sure that the Ottawa Senators and the Calgary Flames have probably already had talks about the possibility. I just don't know if it's something that Matthew would want. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one. And uh, we've run out of time. But one day, you're going to come back, we'll have the Austin Matthews conversation, and we'll further this one on the American players because Jack Campbell just signed in Edmonton, and I know that there is a caveat in what you said to Edmonton. Josh Norris yeah. in Ottawa. I mean, maybe he couldn't say no to eight times eight. But there, there are American guys who are embracing this spot, and I understand it's different for everyone. For sure. And there's another example in Calgary. Adam Fox was yeah. drafted by the Flames, and he said from day one, I'm not going there. Yeah. Sure. But, that, you know, for every Jacob Truba who wants to leave and, and these guys and, and Matt, Johnny Gaudreau, there are Americans that want to stay. But then there's JT Miller who wants to leave. So all I'm saying is becoming a bigger problem in the National Hockey League. Yeah, without a doubt. Where I, I do believe at the draft table, teams are going to start wondering if they should be taking Americans yeah. if they have a choice between an American and someone else. And as Jesse and I were talking about, it's exacerbated by the pandemic one and travel yep. now two and how tough that has become. Nobody wants to travel. No one wants to get in an airplane. No one wants to go through certain and airports. Weather, yeah. Our weather too. It's, there's a lot of reasons. I've heard about that. Francis, always appreciate <laughs> that. Know that this was on short notice. Thanks for doing it. Cheers, my man. We'll talk soon. All right, there is Eric Francis dropping a bit of a bombshell. He's as plugged in as there is in Calgary, and he believes this could be done within a week.